friend of air. At the age of 28, Captain Eric Foster assumed command of A Troop, 1st Squadron, 73rd Cavalry Regiment, 2nd Brigade Combat Team, 82nd Airborne Division. Eric's parents never knew exactly where he was positioned. All of his missions were top secret. He could only send a cryptic email message to let them know he was on vacation, and upon return, a simple message of, back now. The company served for nine months without a casualty. Eric was devastated when he lost his first man in combat. During the last phone conversation she would ever have with her son, Barbara spent hours offering comfort for a situation that had no comfort. He was always going out of his way to care for others. For him, everything was about his buddies, his brothers. He called them his band of brothers. Captain John Hartsock agreed that Captain Foster was a respected and proven combat leader whose love for his men supplied him daily with motivation. One week later, on August 29, 2007, Eric and 11 of his men landed in a Delta region to capture the only road available for escape in this hostile territory. Eric landed with his troopers and they were shooting at the helicopter and then they stopped and they were in the tall grass and he and his men had to go in and get them out uh, and they were waiting for him. Surrounded and under fire by Al-Qaeda Eric was calling for air support when a shot entered his shoulder and penetrated his chest. He was evacuated by helicopter, but despite heroic efforts, Eric died at the young age of 29. The grief of the Foster family is indescribable. Their only wish is that others would realize and appreciate the supreme sacrifice of those who so bravely serve our country. These people uh, really sacrifice when you have an army family sacrificing uh, uh, themselves of being away from their family for at least anywhere from uh, what four or five months to fifteen months uh, and uh, they do uh, they put their lives on the line almost every day as they prepared for his funeral his mother Barbara and his sisters Beth and Abby proudly placed a sign in their front yard proclaiming, my son died for your freedom. Calls and letters from everywhere poured into the Foster household as so many paid their respects to a young man who was a courageous leader with a big heart and a gift for inspiring those around him. The funeral was held at his grandfather's church in Franklin with his brother-in-law, Pastor Mike Verkheiser, presiding over the service. The eight-mile procession along Route 8 from the church in Franklin to the cemetery in Oil City was lined with over 1,000 spectators who paid tribute to the fallen soldier, waving flags in support or standing solemnly in respectful attention. Even the Army officials attending from Fort Bragg were awestruck by the show of support. Just three weeks before his death, Eric was home on leave for 15 days. He traveled with his parents to St. Louis for a family reunion. It was one of those mom moments when Barbara forced all the kids to pose for a picture. Though they protested, they did oblige. Little did they know that within only a few short weeks, that picture would become priceless. While the pain of the loss of his only son is great, Bob Foster finds his greatest comfort, his only comfort, in one thing. Uh, he was talking to his sister and he was down and uh, Beth, uh, the older sisters, uh, said, Eric, uh, I want to make sure you know where you're going and, and if anything were to happen to you. And um, uh, she prayed for Eric and Eric asked Jesus into his life again to reconfirm uh, that, uh, uh, that he knew where he was going if, thing, if something happened. And it was roughly four months prior to his um, uh, eventually getting killed. I know where he is. Um, I'll meet him there eventually, and we'll have a great time together. But um, uh, he's in a real good place. He's uh, that Emerald City. 
uh, he's probably awestruck. And uh, uh, that is the only thing that keeps me going.